Hello and welcome to the very first of my Chapeau Shorts, a series on my channel which I intend to be somewhat smaller, more informal videos about some more general aspects related to hats, as opposed to my regular episodes which tend to focus on a single hat. For this first one I want to talk about why many hats tend to have a band around the crown. So if you look at a traditional western brimmed hat, meaning a hat with a crown and brim, as opposed to say a cap or a fez, a toque, or many Asian hats, you'll notice that it is often surrounded by some sort of band, very often a ribbon, but it can also be some cording, or it can be a leather band, or braided band, or any other type of piece of string that surrounds the base of the crown. Nowadays, it tends to be purely decorative, but it did originally have a purpose. In older times, felt hats tended to be somewhat dome-shaped bells that were fit haphazardly over the head. They were one-size-fits-all, meaning back then as today that they didn't really fit anybody particularly well. So wearers would often tie a length of string around their head in order to tighten the hat to prevent it from flying off and to give it something more of a shape. Humans, being the creatures that we are, basically big hairless peacocks who still like to look pretty, people would start putting different ornamentations on that piece of string. They would use different colors, put on a fancy knot, maybe stick a feather in it. So it became an element of decoration as well. After a while, hats started being manufactured in specific sizes, meaning they would fit the wearer well, negating the need to be tightened around the head. But people would still put on these pieces of string, or even sometimes ribbons now, because they liked the way they look. It provided a nice break between the crown and brim, a contrasting color. And it allowed other decorations to be put, like feathers, or as you saw earlier, maybe some pretty metal studs in them, or some sort of braiding, ornate bows. It allowed people to mark themselves out. It could also be used to mark affiliation towards a particular group, such as, in some cases, for boaters, a club, or a school, or, in some cases, a military unit. So this hatband, even though its practical use has been negated a long time ago, still continues to be applied, both out of tradition and because people think it looks good, which I honestly think it does. So I hope you found this little detail interesting, and will join me again in my regular episodes for specific hats. And until then, as always, I tip my hat to you.